Hey guys, welcome back to Flatpak Effects. In this video, I'm gonna show you how to make this really cool paper unfold effect. If you're part of the Flatpak Effects crew, then you can download this project file via the link in the description. If you're not already a member and you're interested in joining, then you can also check it out via that same link below. So I've supplied this project file with all of the files that you're going to need as part of the download for the Flatpak FX crew members. I'm just going to create a new composition here. It's roughly six seconds in length and hit OK. So I've sourced this paper texture here, which I'm going to drag straight into the background here of my composition. And I want to add a few effects to this. The first thing I'm going to add is the tint effect. Now you can search for both of these by searching for them up here under help and then just dragging them straight into the effects control panel. And I've just tinted these to basically like a black and white. I'm just gonna rotate this layer so it sits flat. And then I've also added the bit of curve. So this is basically like a brightness and contrast. And it just sort of really makes that background sort of stand out. So I sourced just this sort of written document. It sort of gives it a bit of texture. I'm just gonna add this in here over the top. And then I'm also just going to sort of cut out part of this because I only want to use part of it so I'm just going to maybe use this part and the best way to sort of remove the background is we can change the blending mode but what I'm going to do is just come up here use the extract tool so I'm just going to apply the extract and if I drag down on the white part you'll see it removes that backdrop now when I go to that document layer now I can actually toggle the modes and switches and I can change the blending mode. Now, if I change this to something like classic color dodge, you'll see it, it gives a, a sort of a nice texture, really makes it sort of blend in here with the backdrop. Now I can just scale this up to however I like, and then I can go through here and just change the blending mode to something else maybe that sits in a little bit better. Something like that, or even classic color burn, something where it just sort of, you know, blends it into the background. You know, this is what makes those animations really interesting when you start putting all these layers together using what I call basically like layering techniques. Now, if you wanna learn more about all this process, then I have two animation courses. If you're an absolute beginner, then you wanna start with my animation master course. That'll walk you through the basics of how to use After Effects and learn to create some really cool looking animations that really stand out. If you're more advanced and you wanna learn even more about these sort of techniques, then you wanna get my animation pro course. It's an intermediate After Effects course. I dive a lot deeper into different techniques that you can use to really make your animation and design really pop. There's tons of student testimonials which you can read via the links in the description below. There'll also be links down there for those two courses. Basically, these are the sort of techniques that I really go a lot more into and really make your animation stand out. So obviously what we're trying to do is create this sort of paper folding effect. So what I need to do is I'm just going to start by bringing in whatever the image is that you're going to use for your sort of paper fold. I'm going to use this image here that I've already sourced and I've already cut out here of the background. Now it works really well. You can use this as a solid image, but it works really well if you cut out the background already. You can remove it, but it obviously depends on the image that you're using. Now, once I've kind of positioned that where I want it, then I'm gonna use another paper texture here. And I'm just gonna drag this straight in over the top. And I can scale this paper texture up, make sure it covers that image. One thing I need to apply to this is basically like a tint effect. You don't have to do this, but it does keep that sort of black and white. Then I can change the blending mode of this to something like multiply. That will then basically, you'll see, keep that texture into that layer, it sort of bakes it in. Now what I can do with both of those layers is then take those and pre-compose them and I can move all of these attributes into a new composition. I'm just gonna call this one holder and then open that up. Now I can also, while I'm in here, just sort of recenter this. And what I want to do with that paper is I don't want it to basically appear where that image is not. So what you can do is use the track mat of that layer underneath and then turn the layer on underneath. So that'll maintain basically that, you know, effect over the top of the blending mode without having that image fill in basically that, that empty space. You know, we want to be able to see what's behind our image. Now, what I'm going to do is then take those two layers and I'm going to basically pre-compose them again so they're in another composition. So I can call this one holder two, whatever you want to do. And then what I'm gonna do is take my pen tool and I wanna cut out 
maybe this section here of the building. So what you want to do is cut out a section that you know that you're going to basically use as the fold effect. So if I bring this here over the top, we're going to have basically like separate layers. These are all going to be separate layers for the folding. What I want to do is basically if I go down to those mask settings, I can subtract this and then we're left with basically like a clean section here. What I'm going to do is basically then create with that selected another layer or another mask, line that up here with the center. So it needs to basically fill the center and basically cover this. Now it starts to bring in that section there, which is fine because when we change this to be intersect, it'll remove just that sort of section that we didn't want in that mask. So it just basically cuts that section out. Now what I can do now is if I make that layer now 3D, I can then basically just hit Y, reposition my anchor point to somewhere about here. I'm gonna turn on motion blur for this layer. And what I can do is if I go across here, I'm gonna go across to my transform properties. And under the Y rotation, I'm just gonna create a keyframe because that's where we want it to finish. But I want it to start somewhere back here. So I'm gonna find basically, you may have to dial this in to kind of get it exactly right. So we end up with something like that. Now you can take both of these, make them easy ease, and that's going to basically just add a little bit of easy easing to that sort of animation. Then if I take that, what I'm going to do is I just need to simply duplicate it. And with that mask, what I'm going to do is bring that mask over to the other side. So I can just flip that mask without moving the center point. If I bring up those rotation properties, it'll be rotating the wrong way. Now I only need to change the front number and I only need to make it positive. So if I remove that number, basically it means that it'll open like butterfly wings or like a book. It'll open basically nice and evenly. Now you can mess around with these animation keyframes if you wanna smooth that out even more. You can go into the graph editor and if you wanna try and smooth this out, you can do all of that sort of stuff, but Basically, once I've got that, if I go back to my holder, this should already be animated. Now you may have to turn on motion blur for that layer to make it all work, but that's basically all I did. If I go back to that other layer and take that holder, copy that, go back to my main comp and paste it. If I open up those mask settings here, I'm going to delete that second mask because we don't need that. And then we reveal that first mask by adding it in. So if I hit add, it's only, and I isolate this layer, it's only going to reveal that top part. Now with this one, I don't want it to rotate in that way. So what I can do is if I bring up those keyframes, I can just delete them. And I can create, basically, if I hit Y, I can just reposition this anchor point. And then I'm gonna create an X rotation keyframe and rotate this one down something like that. So we kind of end up with this layer sort of animating out. Now if I make both of these easy ease, what I can do is off center this because I don't want it to start until about here. So I'm just gonna start this layer there and then it sort of animates on like that. Now what you can also do is you can also scale this up and move it down slightly and maybe speed this up by bringing it in now you may have to go through and just adjust that to make sure it's nice and flat, but then basically we end up with that effect. So that's basically how you create the sort of pop-up effect. So you can do this many times with different layers in there, cut them out and basically just keep expanding them and then folding them as that piece of paper is basically unfolding. If you wanna get even more advanced, you can embed this sort of layer here back into one of these holders and keep creating basically different compositions so that they're kind of all unfolding within each other. That would be a little bit more complicated, but I recommend just sort of, if you haven't done this before, just start with something like basic like this. Then as you build up your confidence, you can sort of explore those different things. Now what I did in my originals, after that basically expanded up, what I did was I created some of these like little money things sort of flowing in one way 
and then flowing out the other. Now that was really simple. All I had to do was basically just create a new composition, which was the same dimensions as the one that I've already got. I created one for the first money and then I created another one for the other money that comes out the other side. Now the way that I created the money, I simply just got an image here of fake money, dragged that in and then I masked it out. So I basically just drew like a mask around it to cut it out. Very simple with that layer. You can see here if I bring up those mask settings, you can see I've just basically added that in. Now to that, what I did was I added a bit of a wave warp so the wave warp basically gives it that sort of wriggling effect. So if you select that money layer, what you can do then is just search for wave warp, drag that here on top. And these are the settings that I've used. I've set this to be cine, height of eight, 220 width, coming in from that direction, which is basically horizontal. And then the wave speed is relatively low. That gives it basically that sort of waving effect. And then all I did was I basically just animated the position. So I've just duplicated this layer here and you can see that basically it's got that wave warp effect over the top. Then I just animated its position. So I'm gonna create a position keyframe here, end up somewhere about there. And you can also hit R and create a rotation keyframe. And I want it to basically rotate slightly. So I'm going to start it like this. Hit U to bring up those keyframes. I can create another two keyframes down the end here because that's where we want it to finish. And at the start, I'm going to bring this back. I'm going to make all of these easy E's. Now to make it curved, what you can do is you can basically come up here to where the pen tool is. And if you hold your mouse click, you can go to convert vertex tool. Then you can basically just kind of drag this out and that'll create that sort of ramp. You may have to then rotate it so that it sort of goes down like this. Now, because I've created one, all I need to do is basically go back to my main composition, grab that money layer, drag it in here over the top, but underneath that middle layer. And I can just reposition it. So I'm going to drag this money layer up. And that's all you need to do because it's one composition. Now, all I did was I just simply duplicated that. And then you can just basically off center this. You've got multiple layers of money coming in. Now then to basically for them to come out the other side, all I did was I did the exact same thing, but this time I used a different note. So I created another money composition. And for these ones, what I did was I just used, I had an, a fake note here with basically two parts to it. So I just basically did the exact same thing, just moved the mask down, but instead of having one, I had two and they just did the opposite. So they're animating the position and then basically moving them out with that little mask around them. And that's how I basically did that. Nothing different from what I've just shown you there in the first one. But the difference is that it's, it looks, the difference is that it's different money that's flowing out the other side. If I grab that money to layer and bring that in, then what you'll need to do is just sort of position it here, drag it up so it's hidden underneath that layer, and then it'll just animate out nicely like that. So you can sort of time it. So as that first note is going in, what I can do is then sort of have this set, these notes flying out. You can then duplicate that, do the same thing again by off-centering this. So find when that note's going in. And there you go. That's how I basically got the notes to fly in and out the other side. Again, if you're part of the Flatpak FX crew, you can download this project file to see for yourself. One final thing that I added over the top was just some text. And then I've just finished it off with some textures here over the top. So one clip that I sourced here was basically like this overlay with like the different things. I think I got this one from pexels.com. So you can search for that and you can just search like overlays. You can find a lot of these sort of overlays that you can use. And if you just drag that onto your composition, you can basically then just add it to screen and it automatically apply it over the top. What you could also do then is add an adjustment layer which sits over the very top and you can 
add then the posterized time. And the posterized time, as you know from being on this channel for a while, it's a slow frame rate effect that sort of gives it that jitter. One last thing you could do is add some camera motion to this. So you can make all these layers 3D, add a 3D camera over the top. But that's pretty much it. That's how I created this pop-up effect. Again, if you like this sort of video and you want me to go even further with these sort of paper pop-up effects, I do cover some of these in my Animation Pro course, which I have some stuff around paper textures and how to do like pop-ups. But if you wanna see a more advanced tutorial here on YouTube, then let me know because I can do a more in-depth one about sort of embedding different layers into multiple compositions to really create some interesting pop-up effects. That's it for this video. If you like this video, you can give it a thumbs up. You can check out more videos over here on the side of screen. Thanks for watching and I'll catch you in the next one.